Once again, good morning everyone. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, mga kaibigan. Kayo na mga nanonood sa inyong mga tahanan, we are grateful that you open your door for us to be with you this morning. Well, we are going to talk about with the threat of COVID-19 pandemic, I trust in the Lord. I, li I like that um, subject because last Sunday I've heard that. And in fact, I would like to thank Pastor Ronilo Bating who shared with me his notes uh, to include with what I'm going to share with you this morning. Well, the threat of COVID-19 is real around the world. There are so many informations available for us to understand. But of course, marami din pong mga fake news na dapat uh, bantayan at wag lang makinig at maniwala sa bawat nakikita at sa bawat naririnig natin. To discern what to believe and not to believe needs knowledge and wisdom. What do you believe will either make you or break you. What you believe will make you strong and confident. On the other hand, it will also make you weak and also fearful. Another issue is the object of my faith and the object of my fear. Ano ba itong pinaniniwalaan ko at ano yung kinatatakutan ko? Importante po yan. Now, pag-usapan natin itong ating kinatatakutan. Why are you afraid today? Ba't ka ba natatakot ngayon? Is your fear legitimate? There are people who are creating fear in their minds. Di ba? Uso na. Kanagitawag o uh, paranoid. Uh, naghimura siya kahadlok sa iyang huna-huna, bisag dili tinood. But, you know, it is very important to know how are we going to address that. Well, for fear to be legitimate, it must be present and potent. Ibig sabihin, dapat nandyan at saka may kakayahang i-harm ang buhay mo. I like the illustration. Uh, I think it was Neil Anderson who shared about this illustration. Meron pong, uh, you know, person na talagang so afraid with the snake. Now, if I'm going to tell you that, okay, King Cobra is very dangerous because it's venomous. Pag ikaw po'y kinagat talagang uh, sa Tagalog expression pa, mabilis pa sa alas 4, ikay mamamatay. Now, I'm talking here about King Cobra, how it is so dangerous. Pero ang tanong, ikaw ba'y natatakot ngayon? Ikaw na nandiyan, nakaupo, nakatayo, ano ginagawa mo sa iyong tahanan? Are you afraid today while I talk about King Cobra? I believe you're not afraid. Why? Because though alam mo that King Corb Cobra has the capacity to harm me, kaya lang wala siya. But what if, all of a sudden, may biglang mabagsak na snake dyan sa harapan mo, hindi King Cobra. What will you do? I think without a question, you will run away. Without asking any question, tatakbo ka. Why? Because, hindi lang siya may kakayanan, talagang yung presence niya nandyan. And then all of a sudden, nasa labas ka na na bahay, ikaw ay nanginginig, umiiyak, lalabas yung anak mo, daladala yung ahas, kasi patay pala. Will you continue to be afraid? Yes, there is the present, but now nagbago na naman kasi wala siyang kakayahang i-harm ka because the, the snake is dead. You know, it is very important that you will really understand if you are afraid unto something. Now, when we talk about faith, same is true. To whom are you putting your faith? And also, is your faith founded on a strong foundation? Kasi nga kung ikaw may paniniwala, pero yung pinaniniwalaan mo naman ay hindi matatag, baliwala yun. And so when we said we believe in God, can you trust God? Can you depend on the Lord? Now, 
Can you tell the difference between Christian faith, pananampalataya natin ng mga Kristiyano, at pananampalataya ng ibang mga tao? Can you tell the difference? And are you sure that your faith is really strong? Well, if you're going to ask me, I believe that my faith is real and my God is real. First, it is written in the Word, the Bible, and then it is true in the history and it is true in my experience. And let us always remember, brothers and sisters, that when we talk about Christian faith, it is founded in the Bible and it is founded in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is His death and His resurrection that is making our faith strong. If you believe on something, be sure that you're standing on the solid ground. Kasi kawawa ka kung naniniwala ka sa isang bagay, pero yung pinaniniwalaan mo ay hindi totoo. Now, when we are going to talk about this situation now, I would like to bring to you to that verse in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Well, it says here, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. This is in the NIV. Now, we know that when you look at the Scripture, hindi ka lang pwedeng kukunin mo yung verse and then gagamitin mo and you try to understand the way you want it at i-apply mo sa buhay mo. So, kailangan maintindihan natin. We know that the main interest dito sa Proverbs is not to study the universe and the laws that it governs. Ngunit, ang focus po dito ay yung tao at yung kanyang moral condition na siyang mag-govern sa kanyang life. So, the purpose of this book is that it will give us real wisdom. Now, the aim of Proverbs included here is to make men know when that is accomplished. It is hoped that men will do that which is right. Hindi po katulad ng ibang mga wisdom na kung saan it's just about theory and ideas and opinions that people will believe in you kasi, oy, ang galing ng kanyang mga idea, ang galing ng kanyang opinion. But the book of Proverbs was written so that if you will know that this is the right thing, Solomon is thinking that you will do the right thing. Hindi lang tama yung pinaniniwalaan mo, dapat tama yung ginagawa mo dahil sa iyong paniniwala. And so, the emphasis throughout this book is on the intellectual recognition of the right as the basis of good life and is allied to the Socratic conception of morality, which is simply that if you know what is right, if the person knows what is right, he will do what is right. Now, sa entire book of Proverbs, chapter 1 to chapter 9, is what they call the wisdom text. It is a wisdom perspective text. And so, again, I would like to thank uh, Pastor Batting when he shared about these three things when we talk about wisdom in the book of Proverbs by Solomon. First, it is sapiental, a way of knowing reality. This is not speculative and philosophical like of the Greeks. So talagang truth to life experience ang wisdom po na pinag-uusapan dito. Second, wisdom here is ethical, a way of conducting oneself. And I will do the right thing because I know it is right, not just for me but also for others. And thirdly, it is religious, a way of relating to divinely assigned order or to God. The ethical and religious wisdom is emphasized in chapter 3. I am believing it and I am doing it because God said it and I am believing it. So, dito po mga kapatid, when we look at the, the book of Proverbs, ito po ay ginagawa ng mga magulang para sa kanilang mga anak. So, if you're going to observe chapter 1 down to chapter 9, Pabalik-balik, no? Anak, um, hinumdumi, 
So, kanunay ginapahinumdum ang mga ginikanan o ang mga anak aron ilang mahinumduman. Because the focus here is to remind the young people that the source of wisdom is more than your research, but the source of real wisdom is God. And now, why it is important? Because here in this passage, Solomon is reminding us that there are limitations sa mga tao. So we need to come to God. Chapter 3, it emphasizes upon youth relationship with God. So, the emphasis is to seek wisdom, hindi from yourself, but from the Lord. And so, the reason why people are seeking wisdom so that they will reject wickedness and evil. Hindi lang para maging bright. And so, here, verse 1 to 12 in chapter 3, the instruction is by the father or the teacher to the children and to the student. The purpose is the education of young men and women to face problems and dangers of the adult world and so that they may become wise and responsible members of our society. Now, ngayon, how are we going to apply that today? We are going to look each of the lines in this verse. First, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, trust in the Lord, in Hebrew, it is called betakon. The word root meaning is to lean on, feel safe, and be confident. Akong usbo, ako sabi sa yapa, mao ang pagpauraray, pagbati sa, kas, sa kasiguruhan, o taas ang imong kumpiyansa. Kung baga, kung mo ingon, tag-trust in the Lord, para kang nakasandal sa pader. That's exactly what it means. And it says that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Primarily, it involves the act of the heart and the will. Remember, when I trust God emotionally, I emotionally decide to put my expectations, my hopes, my dreams, my desire, in short, all my life in the care of the Lord. Kumbaga, I, talagang, with all that I am, I am placing my whole being in the hand of God. In the context of chapter 3, human wisdom is imperfect and fallible even though the young man may think he knows everything. So the writer was telling young people, he was commanding them, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Now mga kapatid, Faith here described as reliance upon or trust in the person of God. He is the true source of wisdom and power. And so should we obey and acknowledge in all things. Now, with all of your heart. So, kung talagang tayo naniniwala sa Diyos with all of our hearts, dapat walang panic. You will not be afraid of anything. You just believe it. Because when you say you trust the Lord with all of your heart, meaning you're in good hand. Now, a wise person is trusting the Lord with all of his heart and may karugtong, lean not on your own understanding. Alam po ninyo, madali kasi tayong, oh, I believe in God, naniniwala ako sa Diyos. And yet, it is easy for us to lean on our own understanding. Instead of upon the Lord, we put our plans first and then ask God to cooperate with us in carrying them out. Naka-experience naka, naka ka na ba ng ganun? In which you have written everything in the piece of paper and then you're telling the Lord, Lord, bless my plan. And then pag meron pong mag sa plano mo, parang ang tingin mo sa kanila, they are disobeying the Lord. Ayaw mong baguhin because you ask the Lord to bless it. Alam po yung mga kapatid, you know, sometimes or many times, doon po tayo nagkakamali. Because when we say we trust the Lord and yet believe na believe tayo sa ating mga sarili. I remember there was an illustration. 
uh, shared uh, to me about the man. He stood before the Lord at sinabi niya si Lord, Lord, bakit hindi mo ako niligtas? Tinanong niya si Lord kasi namatay siya eh. Namatay sa baha. And so, this man was on top of the roof, nasa tuktok ng ano, bubong, and then the flood was, you know, rising. And so, una pumunta doon yung mga rescuer. May dalang, uh, ano tawag niyan? Pump boat. Rescue boat. Sabi, halika dito. Kasi talagang tataas pa ang tubig. Sabi niya, the Lord will save me. So hindi sumakay. Hanggang sa tumaas ang tubig, dumating na ngayon ang rescue helicopter na talaga. Yung helicopter na pumunta doon. And then sinabihan siya, please come up here because talagang you will be carried by the, the, the current. Sabi naman niya, the Lord will save me. Okay, to make the long story short, nasa langit na siya. And so, sabi niya, Lord, bakit mo ako hinayaang mamatay, hindi mo ako niligtas? You know, the Lord said, I went there. First, nagdala ako ng boat. Hindi ka sumakay. Nagpadala ako ng helicopter. Hindi ka pa rin sumakay. Kaya dinala, dala lang kita rito. You know, sometimes even in our situation today, para bang ang, ang, ang tingin natin, okay Lord, kahit na muwantukas kalsada, magpa, mubeso-beso, kabisagin sa, the Lord will save me. Come on. The Lord will meet you soon if you will not obey. Because sometimes we say we trust the Lord, pero yung believe natin sa sarili napakataas. So it says here, lean not on your own understanding. Why lean not on your own understanding, kapatid? Our understanding is limited. God knows the beginning and the end. Remember that. We operate on our daily planner. But God operates in His eternal agenda. Bago pa man nagsimula itong pandemic na to, alam na ni Lord kung anong kanyang gagawin. And so let us always remember that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So don't lean on your own understanding. Trust the Lord. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Do you really understand? Ito, personalan. Do you really understand how the virus works? Tayo na mga pastor, hindi tayo ganun ka knowledgeable patungkol dyan. And then sometimes we look at those in authority, you look at the president, you look at the, yung mga nasa health, sa medical field, kauwi anak nila, uy. Because you don't feel anything. Pero mga kapatid, let me tell you, we are limited. Sila ang mas may alam, tayo wala. Do you have the whole picture? Abi niyo no maglibog na karon diya sa kwan ba social media. Na imuingon okay na, na poy miyog dili pa. Na poy miingon pabalik na ta, na poy miingon paadto pa. Na imuingon mga pila lang kabulan human na ni, na poy miingon tuig pay atong ihapon ni ini. Ano ba talaga ang totoo? But let me tell you, trust in the Lord. Why? Because God knows the beginning and the end. And that is very important truth that we need to grasp. Some people are talking about the virus lightly, but some also are so overly focusing to the point that it paralyzes them. A wise person ay hindi sobrang believe sa sarili at sa sariling kakayahan. Instead, he is submitting everything to the Lord. Kaya, the third point po sa verse na to, it says, In all your ways, submit or acknowledge Him. An ancient rabbi, Bar Kapara, once asked this question. Ano ba yung teksto na kung saan lahat ng essential principle of Judaism ay nakasalalay? So yung tanong sa kanya, What is that text? 
that everything about Judaism is uh, holding on to it. He answered, The first principle upon which all of our work and hope must depend is on this verse, And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And the Amplified Version, it says, In all your ways know, recognize, and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make your straight and plain your paths. In the message by Eugene Peterson, the verse says, Listen for God's voice in everything you do, and everywhere you go, He's the one who will keep you on track. So, hindi ka maliligaw if nakikinig ka kay Lord sa lahat ng iyong gagawin at sa lahat ng pupuntahan mo. And then, the NLT says, Seek His will in all you do and He will direct your paths. Mga kapatid, in all aspects of life, God is to be taken into account. We need to acknowledge the Lord kung nasa bahay ka, kung nasa work, nasa business, Habang ikay naglalaro, habang ikay nagpapahinga, we need to seek the Lord, we need to acknowledge the Lord. So that is living in the presence of the Lord every day. Hindi lamang sa church. Kaya alam nyo, sometimes, honestly, ako po'y na-offend. Those people who will say, kaya talaga namin pumunta sa church. Kasi it's time for us to pray, to come together. Ay, nako mga kapatid, manalangin kayo sa bahay nyo. You don't need to come to church. Bakit sa bahay nyo? Wala ang Diyos. You know, sometimes, um, I remember my good friend, Pastor Arnel, uh, sometimes we insist on big gathering. Pero sa mga small gathering, wala tayo. Di ba? Ano sa akin ko ito? Dapat, di kita muunang sa pag-ampo. Niya usahay, kinirabang nagsultian eh, wag yung kukakita nga ni appeal of prayer meeting. And so, let us recognize and let us give God all the aspects of our lives. He is to be acknowledged sa lahat ng lugar. Why? To acknowledge Him requires fundamentally humility. Kinigil bitang magpaubos, kinigil bitang ta? We recognize that our own will is subject to a higher will. His power is prior to our being. Malitang karon, naka nakapuliki na taaning COVID. Remember mga egso ng atong Joss labing gamhanan. O sa yung atong gihunahon na atorang mga kaugalingon. Pwede ba paghunahon na onin yung ang gino mas labaw pa kaysa tanan? And then, we are dependent for life, breath, and everything. Acknowledging God helps us to think more or help us not to think more of ourselves. O kung dili ka pirmi maghuna-huna sa imong kaugalingon, mo resulta kiniigsoon nga to sa pagpaubos sa atong kaugalingon. Nga kita nga mga tao don't have the final answer to all the questions and that no person can equate his own opinion and his own judgment with those of God. To acknowledge Him, batasan nga masaligun. Okay? Sa tinuray lagdaghang kay tag mga kasinatian, ingon nga mga tao, that is beyond our capacity to explain. And even this one, this is beyond our capacity to understand. If we are not careful, we started to become bitter and cynical out of our frustration over the tragedies that we are experiencing as a normal human in this planet. Diba? Tawag ka mo na takasabot, panlit ang nagsunod-sunod. Namatay ang amahan o ginahan. Luoy kayo ang mga anak. Asa sila pa ingon. And we experienced that just a few months Father and mother, sabay-sabay, kinuha ni Lord. Can you understand that? Bisa pag-usawa ni Mok, explain, 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 nga no. And so, 
The one who acknowledged God, trust Him. And he believes that the administration of the universe is still in good hands, in trustworthy hands, although he must often hold his belief, though tears and darkness, a faithful man seeks to maintain the spirit of trust. Kung nisali kita sa gino, if we are really trusting the Lord, even if we don't understand, we continue to cling and we continue to believe. And so, mga kapatid, sabi nga, I, I, I have this quote from, from George MacDonald. Sabi niya, this is a sane, wholesome, practical, working faith. Sabi niya, first, that is, man's business is to do the will of God. So, yan pinakauna. Ang, ang, ang trabaho ng tao is to do the will of God. Second, that God takes on Himself that special care for that man. So, kumbaga, dahil ginagawa mo ang kalooban ng Diyos, obligado ang Diyos na talagang He will take care of you. All your needs, all about you, He will take care of you. And the third, therefore, that man ought never to be afraid of anything. Kasi pag binigay natin kay Lord lahat, even those things that we cannot understand, including what we are facing today, will not discourage us because alam natin that we are giving our lives in the Lord. And so acknowledging God produces tranquility of mind. There is comfort after one does his best he can to rest the case on one greater than himself. Our lives are in the hand of stronger and wiser and better than our own. That is trusting the Lord, leaning on our own understanding, and acknowledging Him, trusting Him. And what is the promise? He will make your path straight. The result of trusting the Lord with all of our hearts and not trusting our own understanding of acknowledging Him in all that we do is that God making our path straight, God will crown our effort with success. And so mga kapatid, how can we apply trusting the Lord in response to the threat of COVID. First, trusting the Lord means, I want to borrow the words of Pastor Mark Henson's of word in the Center Point Church. Sabi niya, resist the hysteria, wrap up the hygiene, raise up the hallelujah. So ano daw? Resist the hysteria. Huwag kayong magpanik. God is not giving us the spirit of fear. But spirit of love, spirit of uh, power, and sound mind. Wrap up the hygiene. Maghugas ng kamay. Maintain proper social distancing. And then, raise up a hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Amen? Because this is very important. The name of Jesus is more powerful than anything in this world. Also, trusting the Lord means trusting those whom He has given knowledge and wisdom to address specific concerns. Kung kayo'y naniniwala sa Diyos at kung kayo'y talagang nananalig sa Diyos, kayo po'y mananalig doon sa mga tao na kanyang binigyan ng kaalaman paano i-address ang isang bagay. Kung ang problema po natin ay lindol at threat of tsunami, makinig kayo sa Feebox because they will explain to you, walang tsunami, huwag kayong matakot. Kung ang problema naman ay peace and order, inv uh, invasion, rebellion, makinig kayo sa Armed Forces of the Philippines and the, in the Intelligence Network. Pero ngayon po ang problema ay sa health. Kaya tayo po'y makikinig sa advice ng Department of Health in fact, mga kapatid, ang DOH po ay lead agency lang talagang this is inter-agency task force dahil the concern of COVID-19 is more than health. It affects economy, it affects security, it affects food production at lahat ng bagay including transportation. 
And so, trusting the in the Lord, kasali na po dyan, na ibigay mo yung car mo sa isang mekaniko at hayaan mo siyang ayusin yan. That is also trusting the Lord. Trusting the Lord means, hihiga ka sa upuan and then yung dentist, birahan ng imuhang ipon, pero did you kamusukol bisag sakit? Why? You are also trusting the person that can address your problem. Trusting in the Lord involves staying at home, enjoying the Lord, and being absent in your church building. That is still trusting the Lord. Because the Lord is everywhere. You know, Isaiah 4.6, alam natin to, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you as my priest. Kulang po yung kaalaman natin. Don't allow yourself to be destroyed. Makinig kayo doon sa may, al- may alam. Thirdly, trusting the Lord means accepting realities both good and bad, but confident in the truth that God is still in control. God is never confused of what to do right now. Imo bang ma-imagine kaya ang ginoo ro no nagka kung sa ato pang term mga mga bisaya nagkabuang ang ginoo. Pwede ba gutang musulti ana? Hala nagkaratol-ratol ng ginoo sa iyang buhaton. Hala sa China, sa America. Let me tell you, God is just resting in his throne. Because he is in control. And so if you are fixing your eyes on Jesus, you are like those disciples na habang the, 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 the boat is almost, you know, murag mo, lunod na yudong boat. And what did the Bible says? Jesus was there resting. Tulog-tulog lang si Jesus. And there are mga tao ninyo, Lord, ahayaan mong tayo yung malulunod. Mamatay na po tayo. And then Jesus just stood, and then He said, Peace, be still. So mga kapatid, you need to understand that we are, we are believing and we are, we are resting our, our lives in the God who is in control over everything. Habakkuk 3.19, this is a very familiar verse. Sabi dito, Though the fig tree does not bad, There are no grapes in the vines. Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no good, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. And maybe I would say, kahit na walang pasok, wala po kaming graduation, hindi man lang kami nakababay, wala na po kaming customer, wala na lahat. And yet here, Habakkuk is telling us, even if I cannot see good things, I will keep on trusting, believing, resting in the Lord. This is very important. Trusting in the Lord. means accepting realities both good and bad and confident that God is still in control. If you remember another story, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 and 18, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, kasi meron pong threat ang king, if you're not going to bow down to me, you will be thrown in that furnace. Look at what they said. Sabi nila, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves. Before you in this matter, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And He will deliver us from your, from your majesty's hand. But then look at the next verse. It says, But even if He does not, Ano daw? Sabi ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Alam natin that God can address this problem. Alam, alam natin, God will solve this problem. But even if he will not, I will keep on trusting in the Lord. And then, trusting the Lord. means resting in the promise. 
David, in Psalm 56, sabi niya, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? David recognized he was afraid. And so he ran to God. Are you afraid today? Let us run to God. And then you will know that you are already in God's hand when like David, you will also say, now I trust in God and I am not afraid. God and His Word is one. And remember, God never fails. And lastly, trusting the Lord means making Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Virus will come and go. But let me remind you that all of us, someday, we will be surviving from all of these calamities, but all of us will be facing eternity. We will stand before God. Are you trusting the Lord for your eternal destiny? Are we trusting, maybe we trust the government. We trust the armed forces. We, we trust the World Health Organization. We trust the DOH. Pero mga kapatid, let me tell you, they are limited. But there is someone that you can trust, that you can rely on, that you can depend on, and that is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because He will not only save you today, but even if today you will receive no favorable result, He will bring you to eternity. And so, I don't know your condition. But one thing I'm so sure of, God is in control. If you trust in Him with all of your heart and you will not rely on your own understanding and you will entrust to the Lord your whole being, He will make your path straight. I still believe the best is coming in this world because we will be with the Lord for our country, for our family, and for your life. So with the threat of COVID-19, trust in the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this very moment. Lord, thank you that your presence is in every home. Thank you that you are the one comforting us. You promise to never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, there are times that we cannot understand, but we believe that you are in control and that we are in the good hand. And so, Father, I pray, let your shalom will rest in every home today. Let every person who hears this message understand that our security, that our safety is not in this world, but in the Lord. Because we know that the safest place in this world is in the center of the will of God, is in the embrace of our loving God. Lord, for those who are not sure of their eternal destiny, I pray also, Holy Spirit, right now, help them understand that they are sinners. Help them understand that Jesus is the only way. And help them understand that if they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, if they will give their lives to Jesus and they allow Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of their lives, they will be enjoying abundant life in this world and in the world to come. Father, all the glory and honor, we bring it all back to you because you alone deserve it. In the name of Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. And amen. And now let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord will allow his shalom to reign in your hearts today. In the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen and amen.